Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for attending today's course for Comeback to Success. I am currently here with Ward Nelson. And uh, Ward, uh, would you be able to introduce yourself briefly? Hi, I'm Ward Nelson, uh, a uh, former county council member, a former pharmacist, and now retired. Nice. Yeah. And, and currently, where are you living right now, Ward? Grants Pass, Oregon. Okay, there we go. So doing the Oregon. All right. So uh, with that being said, um, we're here because we wanted to talk about mental health and also to help um, people who are interested um, in purchasing this course. If, you ha if you're if you watching this video, you purchased the course. And I'm really excited because you guys now have this opportunity to get some more insight on how to come back to success and create results in your life so that you can become more successful and happy. And I know that Ward, for example, he's gonna be a perfect resource that's gonna help uh, solidify some goals for you so that you can become more resilient in your life and give yourself more perspective so you can, and also some feedback that's gonna help you grow and take your life to the next level. So there's a list of questions that I created that I think that are proven to help people who like myself uh, being diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Many of you know me um, as Brandon Burbank. And so that's something that uh, basically Brandon Burbank being diagnosed with bipolar disorder, also author, keynote speaker on mental health and personal development. Um, so all those things, I just wanted to give you guys a quick synopsis more about who I am and the reasons why I'm credible to talk about mental health, because those are really important topics that I think a lot of us don't, don't choose to go into detail and depth about within themselves and to help other people as well. So, so with that being said, I'm gonna go straight into it with um, with Ward. And uh, Ward's gonna be the, the topic keynote speaker for the night. And I'm just gonna be asking him questions and, and giving, bouncing some ideas off with him, as well as giving some feedback for you guys. And I really hope that the biggest takeaways is that you guys can um, build upon this, build upon this online course. You can also reach out to me to do upcoming um, consulting opportunities because I'm currently um, in the Long Beach, LA County area uh, here in California. And so, um, but I'm also ab able to do consulting virtual as well as in person. So um, with that being said, guys, let's go dive into it. All right. So Ward, the first question I have for you is what is your educational background? I have a bachelor of science in pharmacy. Okay. And what is your career-related background? Well, I've been in the military uh, for over 20 years. I was, uh, uh, as a pharmacist, I worked uh, in private sector as a pharmacist, managing pharmacies. Uh, I have worked uh, in, like I said, uh, government, uh, uh, serving on many boards and commissions and helping the citizens of the community that I formerly lived in. Nice. Yeah, that's cool. What was what was like the best part about your experience of like helping the community out? Because I know that there's a lot of people out there in this, uh, like there's a lot of people that are struggling to be successful and, and find that opportunity to like go to college or that need to um, like basically like are, are trying to build wealth in their life. And, and but wealth is important, but the mental health aspect, how does that connect with everything? Basically, any time that you do good in life, it makes you feel good. So volunteering and helping in your community gives you good feelings. Those good feelings transfer to better mental health. Uh, so doing uh, government, uh, I a lot of time spent time uh, away from home, but uh, it was worthwhile, not only in the learning aspects of my own growth, but also in the fact that I felt good in helping my community become a better place to live. Sweet, yeah, that's cool. Um, okay, the next question I have is, what makes you credible to talk about mental health? Well, I have a medical background as in the pharmacist. I'm not trained in social work or anything of that nature, but I've taken many of those courses. Uh, I have the uh, background of serving on mental health boards, both in local community as well as in the regional networks. Uh, five county region network. I was the uh, chair of that 
uh, mental health and substance abuse boards as well. Okay. Sweet. Yeah. So I think it's what's cool about this, this online course for everybody is that it's going to help you guys like getting it from a different perspective in this interview with Ward, it's going to help you guys. So you, you get a different perspective because Ward is a great guy and like, but I, I'm, from my perspective, I am dealing with a, a mental illness. And so that's why uh, someone who that's a uh, mental professional type uh, perspective is going to help give you guys, I think, more clarity so that you can come back to success and create something that uh, you want to uh, accomplish in your life. So, um, all right, Ward, are you ready to move on? Sure. Okay. So, um, steps for a successful recovery from a mental health diagnosis. Steps for recovery? Like, just like what are some successful steps that someone can take to become well, very, more successful in their recovery? I think the very first step is recognizing you have something wrong that you don't feel right. Many times that what we deal with in mental health in treatment is what's called stigma. Uh, people do not want to think that they are mentally have a, a disease. Just like people with diabetes will sometimes say, I don't have diabetes. Or somebody that has heart disease will say, I don't have heart disease. So the very first step is recognizing that you may have something that's not making your life be what it should be or what you want it to be. Uh, and then once you recognize that, then we can go on into finding a method of treatment. The things to avoid in that is trying to self-treat. Just like if I was uh, had an appendix that needed to be taken out, even though I know where the appendix is, I'm not going to cut myself open and try to heal myself. I'll go to someone that knows how to do that rather than try to self-treat. The reason that is, is you're going to make a mistake. And some of those self-treatments may uh, involve using incorrect medications or uh, il even illicit uh, drugs, uh, which can make the situation worse. And we when you mentioned about how stigma is something that really helps people, I, I really want to touch upon that more with you and sure. focus on that because stigma really, I think, from my perspective, like when I've learned how to like destigmatize myself and my perception of how like accepting the diagnosis, like that's something that I really talk about in my book, um, Come Back to Success, how the, the first thing you need to do is accept your diagnosis and then learning how to manage it and understand it more is the second step. Correct. Uh, I can give you a, a, a story, a success story about someone that had to deal with schizophrenia. It was a, long, a while back, uh, a former uh, gentleman that ran for mayor of Seattle, Washington. Uh, he was a very successful attorney as, uh, at uh, good law practices. And he was a very intelligent individual. He went back to Washington, D.C., where they wanted to introduce him back there to move him up into higher office. Uh, he came back from there, and he almost tried to kill his newborn child because all of a sudden the schizophrenia kicked in. But fortunately, he recognized the symptoms, and he even... But he thought his life might be ruined. I mean, how can I run for mayor or governor of the state of Washington if people think I have a mental illness? That's a stigma. But he was brave enough to say, you know what? I'll tell, be honest with people. And he was honest with people. He did his treatments, uh, still on treatments, uh, became a very uh, successful politician. Interesting. Yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting perspective. Um, but I the think... first thing he had to do is recognize he had a problem. Yeah, I think, I mean, that's, that's a universal concept too. Like if we're not even talking about people who are just trying to be successful and like, you know, all these success stories, you know, like if there's, there's problems that we all have. So how do you work on overcoming those so you can become a, a better person and more, more personally developed? Correct. All right. So let's move on to the next question. Um, how can family and friends be supportive for someone who is diagnosed with a mental health condition? Well, the very first thing that I would recommend is be honest with your family and family members. I don't feel right. I don't feel good. I need to, I'd like to get some help uh, dealing with my problems, okay? Uh, hopefully you have uh, an ability to uh, get uh, the insurance or the financing where for all that you need so that you can get into treatment and start your treatment. The next thing is the family uh, and friends should also become educated 
mm-hmm. on mental health. That's where NAMI, uh, National Alliance of Mental Illness, comes in handy because there's a lot of people in there are people that may not have mental health conditions, but are trying to work with family or loved ones that do. Nice. And it's a good support network. Yeah, that's that's right on. I think you you hit the nail on the head, Ward. So to speak. With all that. Um, okay, let's move on. Um, how does having a positive mindset and perspective in life leverage better opportunities for growth and recovery from a mental health diagnosis? I know that's a big question. Does that, do you understand that okay? Yes, I think that it doesn't matter whether you have mental health or not. If you can't believe in yourself and if you can't believe that you can succeed, then you probably won't. So the very first person you have to convince of that you are going to do this and that you can do this is yourself. Um, I always told my kids that believe in yourself before anything else. You can't help anyone until you do. Uh, So it is very important that you become confident in what you're doing, uh, your treatments, uh, and then you're confident in uh, that you're getting better and that you're confident that you want to, you're positive that you want to move forward. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I think it's also like, if you, if you will, if you know that and understand that you're like, nothing's perfect in life, but you're trying to move forward and, and you're trying to move in the right direction, then you're going to create something that's eventually going to really spark a lot of attention and a lot of opportunity for, for change within yourself and, and also to make an impact in, around you, the people that are in your life. Right. So, um, okay. So that was good. Yeah. I think really th- that was good. Thanks for answering that word, but um, let's move on to the next question and um, career. This is a good one, like right? Because there's so many people out there, like there's a, a statistic out there that's uh, 50 million adult Americans are dealing with a mental illness. And so h- how do we get these people that are trying to be successful or trying to sh- have struggles to, to be in a career field that's, that sets them apart from the rest as well as helping them, like, just individualistically speaking, like, just think, look at one person and how do they, w- and my question is, career-related advice for a better sense of purpose and direction when faced with a mental health diagnosis? What do you think, Ward? Well, uh, you know, first off, success is only achieved when one has made that determination. If one continues to fight the disease or deny it, uh, it starts ruling your life. Uh, When you you need to have a good support network. What you're doing is a type of networking. You need someone you know that you can relate with and talk to. Uh, you may have that in your church. It may be at a school. It may be in a, the community. Uh, there are all sorts of resources for a person to connect. Okay. Once you're connecting with uh, other people, then you learn how they do things. You have to have the experiences. Uh, if you have a disease, whether it's diabetes, asthma, or anything else, it's very difficult when you first have that diagnosis and, and you're not sure what you're supposed to do or how do I move forward. But we have ways of the treatments now that you know, help people so that they can lead a normal life uh, and feel good about themselves. And that's, the, that's what you need to do is start reaching out, whether that's your physician for the first time or whether that's for support groups. Cool. Yeah, that's, I agree with everything. Um, okay, so what are some of the remedies that can help structure a successful recovery for a mental health struggle? I know for me, I'll start before you answer that. Um, for me, the remedies, like just exercise and um, like proper sleep, diet, all those things like is are very important and key towards giving yourself a more of a balanced lifestyle and and recognizing and self-awareness too like having a recognition for okay i'm feeling this way so i better just chill out or i'm feeling this way so i can go on a run and and like balancing out your work life balance so that you can or or school balance too like so that that way you can be more in tune with yourself and be in control of your life that's a good point yeah it's a good point i i could i look at life as in cycles uh, you know what a, a yin and yang is, for example. 
you have your days where you're up, you have days where you're down. Uh, or it may be weeks or whatever. There are things that adversely affect us, uh, our jobs, our schooling, and we get nervous or afraid. Well, those are days that you know, you know what, I'm not gonna worry about them because I can't control that. I can only do what I can do. And I'm gonna look forward to the days where I'm up because you know the sun is shining, the birds are chirping, and I'm having a good time. Uh, and if you look at life in that perspective, understanding that everybody, it doesn't matter what their mental health status, goes through ups and downs. Uh, and, and if you recognize that you're not always going to be in a down, that makes you start feeling better right away. So, uh, like you said, correct diet, exercise, uh, maintaining you know, you know, your regimens, if you have medications, getting your sleep, uh, understanding you know, that you're always taking steps forward. Always think of life, I'm gonna take steps forward going down the road. Try not to take steps backwards. I think it's interesting what you just said about how forward and backwards, honestly, like when you think about it, like this is for everyone here right now, like the, the going forward, the, if you're either going forward or you're either going backwards, there's no such thing as like just still because life is always moving forward. I mean, so- Around you. Yeah, like I think that's why it's it's important to be, cognitive about your actions that you're taking every day towards getting you to progress in life. So uh, let's move on to the next one. Okay. So what are some steps to recovering and transitioning to life when being in the psych ward? Well, I can't speak to that directly. Uh, I haven't been there. That's true. Uh, yeah. <laughs> let's just move on to the next question. Yeah. yeah that's I mean, that's I've, had, for me. I've had friends that had to do that. And, you know, sometimes it's those periods of time in your life where you end up taking backward steps and you end up getting worse and you need more uh, what we call pack type help. Uh, in other words, personal uh, people there to help you. In other words, making sure you're getting your medications, making sure you're getting your rest, uh, intensive management. Sometimes you might need that. There's nothing wrong with that. But you want to always think about once you do that, that you want to continue to go forward and don't get into the situation, whether that's using drugs or alcohol, that puts you into that mental health facility. Yeah, that's really, that's, I think that's good advice. I mean, given the fact that you've never been in the psych ward before. So <laughs> anyways, um, but, you know, to be fair, though, like there's a lot of people out there that have. So that's why it's, it's right. There's, there's like, um, for those of you that are, like watching this course right now, it's like, I, I've been there too. So I know the, 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 the level of difficulty and the, the, just everything that, that came with it was, is it's a hard to understand. It's hard to comprehend. And so I really, my heart goes out to you guys because I know that I understand what it's like to be in the psych ward and how it's really sucks and it, it, it's difficult, but it's, it's made a difference in my life because it's, it's changed the way I think about myself because it's helped me develop myself more because I know wow I've hit rock bottom but there's there's only one way to go up now and that's up so like just keep you keep moving forward is is the, my best piece of advice for you guys so uh Ward any other thoughts about around that topic well uh, I mean it, it I, in all my years of experience I mean I I haven't been there but I've taken people there I've helped them get uh, understanding that they did need help uh, because they were suffering uh, you know, the, the, the big thing is you don't want to give up on life. Uh, even though you think you're down in the dumps, you know, the, the life itself is beautiful. Life itself uh, is enjoyable once you can get your mind in the right place. Yeah, I agree with that. That's, that's key. And, and once you recognize how special you are because you're unique, things get better because your confidence goes up and you're just, your morale is boosted. So, I mean, you, you can do this. So uh, let's move on to the next question. Uh, what are some of the best ways for an individual with a mental health diagnosis to come back to success and personally develop themselves? You know, everybody's going to have individual methods. I think some of the best things I've seen in success are uh, people that have gotten themselves treatment and decided that they were gonna put one foot in front of the other and move forward in their life. 
they also, uh, people, once you start healing, sometimes you'll find the sources that might be causing or exasperating your condition. Uh, sometimes that's a family life that's bad. Maybe it's a job that's bad. Uh, but you have to get your mind in the right place so you can evaluate, evaluate your life and evaluate where you want to go and realize that maybe where you're at isn't the right place. It's sort of like you were saying, Brandon, you don't want to stay stagnant in the road. You want to keep moving forward. Yeah, I think that's really smart. And yeah, I think for everyone, um, I think the, the perspective is like can do attitude and and also, when you're putting effort into things, like try and give it your all, give it your best effort in everything you do, and um, and that will show because people will take notice of that, and that's the that's when the opportunities really can can flourish from from the fact that you are like focusing on your 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 steps that you're taking toward um, becoming the the person you want to become. Make sure that you also remember that it's not just treatments as in medication. The treatments all should be an exercise. It might be yoga. It might be a meditation. All those things to help the mind and the body and the spirit grow at the same time. It might be the church. And whatever it takes, you need to find this place that feels best for you so that you're feeling more confident in yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think the last thing that I think is important <clears throat> to bring up around um, – like I've like I've done many times in my past speaking engagements, talking about with uh, I know Ward, you mentioned stigma, and I think stigma is like in our communities that stigma needs to be destigmatized so people can be more open-minded around mental health, and so people can be more like accepting of someone if they have a condition like myself. Um, and so, like for me personally, it doesn't bother me like as much as it used to, but I know there's a lot of people out there struggling who are trying to like find confidence when they like my best piece of advice that I can give to you is um, associate yourself with people who um, accept you for who you are uh, within your condition so that you can become more uh, you feel feel happier because you're around people who want to be want to see you um, flourish and, and succeed and, and just be yourself. So that's that's key. I think that's important. Um, Roy, what do you think? I agree wholeheartedly. And, you know, I, there's a lot of pe people that you'll meet in your life. Brandon met me at working in the same location, and uh, we've had an a ongoing relationship for many years now. Yeah. Uh, personally, uh, I never thought of Brandon having a mental health condition until he told me what he wanted to do. I always saw him as a young man that wanted to achieve success in his life and move forward. Yeah. Thank you, Ward. Yeah. So, I mean, for you guys, I think, um, let's, uh, Ward, is there any other comments or questions that you have to give to uh, the viewers? Well, I, I encourage everyone to be the best you can be. The, the hardest thing in life is, is having self-doubt or having uh, uh, the lack of confidence that, that freezes you. So don't think that you're going to be a multimillionaire by stepping out or an educated person by just going to school. It's going to take baby steps along the way. So give yourself goals and objectives that you can achieve at first. Then if you're feeling good about those that you achieve, uh, whether that's just going to the physician uh, or a psychiatrist or a counselor, whatever it may be. If that's achieved and you feel good about yourself, you can start spreading those goals, making them uh, uh, a little more distant that you have to work harder towards, but make sure you have successes along the way. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. I think um, kind of just to bounce off with that is <laughs> the, like, don't, don't be, I mean, I'm not giving you advice, but I'm just giving you perspective. Like for me, like I, I'm accepting your diagnosis. Like for many of you guys watching this, it, many of you have some type of depression, anxiety, or condition. Like that's real, it, and it's it's tough. Like I I get it. There's gonna be times when, like Ward said, there's gonna be days when you're gonna just be down or Debbie Downer, and then there's gonna be other days when you're like, oh man, this is great. But focusing on one thing at a time, and I think where I'm going with this is like the. I forgot where I was going with this, but I think just in general, like as a rule of thumb, 
you can't help anybody until you help yourself. So be selfish in that aspect. So um, I think that wraps up the video. And um, thank you guys so much for uh, attending the online course for Come Back to Your Success. Um, thank you so much for Ward, for guest, uh, guest speaker to, of the day, Ward. Um, I appreciate your expertise and um, providing a lot of insight and direction for a lot of the viewers uh, that are watching this so that they can become more, uh, more receptive towards themselves as well as helping them get in the right direction. So with that being said, um, we'll see you guys next time, but um, there will be more uh, online courses that we're developing. If you, uh, if you know of yourself or a, a loved one or anyone, uh, a connection that feels that this might resonate with them, feel free to share this with them. And, um, and then also you can reach out to me. Um, I have more information around where to contact me for the, uh, my availability for consulting opportunities. So with that being said, let's um, we'll we'll finish this and thank you so much guys.